the more Detroit likes Malik Willis, the more they are incentivized to tell nobody. He, he was not someone that was viewed as a for sure first round pick coming into the process. Um, and he has certainly been rising. But if if you like Malik Willis and you're Detroit, you have every incentive in the world to tell all your media contacts and everybody else that you like everyone but Malik Willis because you, you don't want to get hot. It's like people people ask, like, well, why would the 49ers lie to their media contacts about the, the Mac Jones, Trey Lansing? I'll tell you why. Because Robert Sala was picking in the two hole. He yeah, had just right. come from working with those guys. <laughs> yeah. They knew that he was going to take Zach Wilson. They didn't want Zach Wilson. They wanted Trey Lance. So, you know, we'll we'll just say that we're going to take Mac Jones so Sala can't figure out who we actually like and maybe have a second thought about, is Trey Lance actually a better prospect than Zach Wilson? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And so, Andy, let me ask you about Detroit then. Uh, if you're Detroit and you pass on a quarterback this year, what's the plan? Oh, uh, Buddy, You're gonna win too many games next year in a weak ass shitty division. That's where and to we, be to get a bite out of the good quarterback class next year. That's what stinks about. And we said this in our previews last year. We liked how Detroit was setting up for the rebuild, and it's nobody's fault how a draft class shakes out as far as who's who's the valuable players at this spot. And I say this every year about Detroit. They should try to trade back if they don't take Willis. If they don't truly want Willis. They trade back. Again, that is another thing that depends on other independent variables, like another team wanting that spot, another team being able to offer enough for you to want to move back. And after that, like the move is probably to take defense, but defensive players sometimes uh, end up, you know, paying dividends too fast, unless it's like a corner. So I think corners really, really do struggle early. And that's probably going to be the case even for our top two guys, Sauce and the LSU kid too. And that's the, no indication of how it definitely will be for Stingley. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sting, Stingley. Well, I think Stingley can have a nice career, but it's it yeah. might be a rough start. If you don't get that? the joke, Stingley's gotten the core, the Thor kiss yeah. of death already. So yeah. he's he, he, best of luck to him in his pro career. Hopefully, he's not yeah. on my team. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, but no, I'd say yeah. like the the move is to go defense. But for, if for that Detroit, pays too much. If that pays too much dividends, then you you know if your defense improves and you win a few extra games, which maybe a, a really good couple of moves on defense isn't gonna like buy you two games or three games. So I wouldn't say like uh, let's just try to but build your, some your young guys depth. that you drafted last year are getting better this year too. So know, you're all of a like, sudden like you're a 500 ish team even with Jared Goff at quarterback this year. You might as well be. You know, put a rookie quarterback in, let him take his licks, let him get beat up a little bit over the first half of the season. I think that I mean, and or just at least get a guy on your roster who you intend to build around. And and, that, and that's where if you they know, choose you, not you, to do that. I just I don't know what the vision is. Well, that's where I would hope the vision is to trade back, and maybe they have an eye on a different quarterback, and they are being very cagey about it. Well, they have the thirty second pick in the draft. They have the thirty second pick, so presumably yeah. they could pass on quarterback at two and take best quarterback available. And get your five year, with, get your with five years with another five quarterback. Years. I, do you get the sense that there are true straight lines connecting them to the likes of the Corrals or the Ritters of the world who may be available then? Not necessarily to to a, a specific prospect like that, like with the later pick, but they got the what is it, thirty two and thirty four. They're yeah. gonna if they don't take a quarterback at two, you must take a quarterback in those two picks. Like I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't see the downside of taking Malik Willis. You've been a dumpster fire franchise for the <laughs> last thirty years. You're gonna take another trench player because we're gonna build it up and and then like you mentioned, you know, just we're mentioning like you're deferring the quarterback thing. You're not gonna win until you get the quarterback. And so now we're going to be two years down the road. Now we take the quarterback and we're going to roll the dice. And if he doesn't work out, now you've done the thing where you screwed up the core with, with the quarterback again. And so like for, for me, there's no time like the present. And there's, there hasn't been many quarterbacks ever to enter the NFL that have the ceiling that, that Malik Willis does. I, you're right there. And the, he's right there for you. If you don't take him and he turns into an all pro D Detroit football deserves what's coming to him. <laughs> You compared Detroit to a dumpster fire. Let's not slander dumpster fires. Um, <laughs> there, 